Hi there, my name is Simon and welcome to my garage. Um, not that long ago I bought this little Suzuki Swift board and I'm trying to renovate it, make it almost like new. And I just replaced the steering rack and yet it still does actually not uh, center the steering wheel when making a turn. I can feel it's much better the steering but we are not quite there yet. And it actually happens that there is an error code stored, uh, C112022, which is uh, engine input malfunction to the power steering control module. And I actually thought, well, this could be a funny video to make because it will show the principles of how to approach basically any electrical fault in your vehicle. So let's jump into the car and let's hook up the scan tool and let's verify uh, the fault code together. So I got my little scan tool connected and I'm uh, just going to go directly into the control module that we are talking about, which is the electronic power steering. And it actually says there is an error code stored. Great. And we're going to read out the fault code. C1122, and you can see it's current engine RPM input malfunction. Before we do anything else, I think we should go directly to the blackboard and have a small talk about what is this and how does it actually affect the power steering. Before we come too far with our diagnostic routine, I think we should gain a little bit understanding on how the system actually works. And I've been looking into the wiring diagram, trying to gain a better understanding of how the different uh, control modules are linked together and how it actually works. First of all, we have the electronic control unit, we have the power steering control module. Those two are actually not communicating through a CAN bus system. Uh, it is uh, only uh, ECU which is being communicated with uh, without a CAN bus system. So it's basically just a regular uh, signal the, this module receives like uh, from a whole sensor element. So, but anyway, the error code 1122 states that this power steering control module does not receive an engine speed input or there is an engine speed input malfunction. But I know for a fact that the engine speed signal is actually quite okay because that's coming from the crank crankshaft position sensor going right to the electronic control unit and uh, that signal, if it weren't there, the car would not be able to start or drive or at all, it'll be completely dead. So we know the, si the signal is available, it just needs to be transmitted from the ECU to the power steering control module. Then we have the vehicle speed input and that's also coming from the ECU and that's given by the ABS sensor and well I don't see any ABS lights coming on there is no uh, diagnostic trouble code stored either in the ABS system so I must assume that my four wheel speed sensors or ABS sensors they are actually okay as well. And this signal the ECU transmits as well to the power steering control module. And I have actually also written the wire terminals it's coming in on. So we have, it's connector 52, wire 12, that's the engine RPM. And we have 52, the same connector, of course, uh, pin number four, that's the vehicle speed. Um, so, and what, what is it? Why does this actually need uh, the engine RPM and the vehicle speed? Well, that's of course because it is an uh, electric power steering we're dealing with here. The, it needs to know how fast are you driving, how much assistance does it need to give, but it also needs to that information in order to return back to the sender. So those two uh, inputs are very important. If you don't have it, it doesn't really work. So I think we should jump right into it and what we're going to do following the a very simple principle, we are going to see, do we have supply voltage to the power steering control module? Do we have a good solid ground? And then we are going to look at the signals from the uh, engine the RPM, 
which basically is a crankshaft position sensor. It's a hall sensor, and this is also a hall sensor for the wheel speed. Um, yeah, and then let's see what will happen. I'm going to use my Ultra Detex oscilloscope for this because it's perfect for, for these kind of uh, matters. So, right here we have the power steering control unit and the green wire and the black wire is the supply voltage and the ground. And the ground is actually connected right just to a bolt right here to the chassis. So it's pretty easy to so we'll see, let's see, uh, but let's see what it looks like if we have what. Sorry for that. It's actually fine. So I'm actually just gonna put to the ground and uh, and I can easily see that we have the uh, 12.2 volts available. That's battery and. Uh, what I don't know, because we're not passing on a lot of current using the, this one, the voltmeter, so I have actually made a small ground. This wire is connected to the negative terminal on the battery, and I'm just going to do like this. It sets the one probe of my multimeter to the negative terminal, which is this big wire, and I'm just gonna... So basically what I'm doing right now, I'm uh, touching the chassis ground for the ground wire, and I'm holding this one on the negative terminal, and I'm doing a voltage drop testing to see if there is any voltage drop, and there's actually not. So it is a good ground connection that we have. Okay, so I hope you can hear me, guys. Uh, and girls, for that sake, uh, I have just hooked up the oscilloscope to the engine speed signal. And the engine speed signal, as I said, is coming from the electronic control unit. And, well, this definitely looks like a regular hall sensor signal from a crankshaft. We can, uh, there's nothing wrong with this signal. As you can see, this is what it looks like. So we have an on-off signal like a, like a whole sensor is. Okay, fine, now we know this signal is actually okay. It reaches the power steering control unit. And uh, what we need to check now is the vehicle speed because I know for a fact that the error code, even though it says it's the engine speed uh, it misses, it could also be the vehicle speed. So let's look at that. I'm going to back probe the other pin or the other wire which comes uh, with the vehicle speed signal and we're going to look at that as well. So right now uh, I have back probed the vehicle speed signal and you can see it's approximately, I'm just going to change the volts just a little bit, uh, a little below 5 volts. So okay. And uh, this tells me we are dealing with, once again, a whole sensor wheel speed. And I'm, I'm just, uh, you're not able to see this, but I'm just going to turn the wheel. I'm, just got, I'm turning the wheel right now. And uh, there is actually no signal. It's just completely flatlining. Uh, you would want to see a similar signal as we just saw from the crankshaft sensor. So how can that actually be? Now suddenly we know why it's not able to do a correct steering. It simply don't know how fast the car is going. But there is one more way you can check it out. Let's do that. Okay, so we have now just checked the two signals. One of them were actually okay, the RPM. The vehicle speed was not, however. But uh, I think we should just try and confirm this even more. And I know exactly how we should do it because we will go, we'll use our scan tool, go into the control unit for the engine and afterwards for the power steering and then see are we able to see the RPM and vehicle speed on in both control units. So let's uh, see what happens. Turn on the car. And uh, this is a great way of using live data. We're gonna go into the engine control unit 
and we can actually see, oh yes, it does know how uh, the RPM, and we're just going to find the vehicle speed. And it's uh, zero, but uh, I'm just going to put it gently into gear. Not much is happening. It is in gear right now. So there it is. You can see the vehicle speed. Just revving it up. You can see right here. Okay, what this tells me is that the, as assumed, the engine control unit actually does receive the signal for the vehicle speed. Now let's go back and uh, let's uh, look at the live data. And what uh, for the power steering control unit. And we can see it does know the engine speed right here. And I'm just going to do the same exercise all over again, put it into gear. I'm doing that now. And we can actually see the vehicle speed is zero. So already here I would actually be able to do uh, some diagnostics of what's actually wrong. It simply doesn't get the vehicle speed signal. So, um, not really what I hoped for because what we just found out was that the electronic control unit, it receives a signal from the wheel speed sensor, it receives it from the crankshaft sensor. It does pass on the engine speed signal, however the vehicle speed it does not. So when I started doing this diagnostic routine, I actually thought that it was the power steering control module that were faulty, but it's actually not. This signal is not right and it's coming from the electronic control unit so it needs to be swapped to another and hopefully it'll work again. I hope that you like this video and I want you all to stay safe and take care. Bye.